Hello, my friends. Today we're going to talk about the next option for the graphic uh, drawing. It's actually not going to be a drawing at all. It actually will be painting, but it still will be the graphic because we're going to use only two colors. And that's going to be white and black. Uh, and we're going to mix them together and uh, try to create an interesting picture. I'll put it in perspective and we also were talking about how to create the interesting characters of the trees uh, next to it. And before our class was about drawing the trees. And if you remember, I mentioned the palm tree is the very, very different compared with other trees tree. So, and we kind of put it on the side. The same thing we were talking about before black and white color, which is, I kind of say that they are not really colors. They are helpers to the other colors. And today, to not keep them upset, we will dedicate only them. So, we're going to only use the black and white. And a reason why it's going to be in the graphic or drawing module because they are when we use only them they become uh only the graphic kind of media so we're not gonna uh, call them painting because uh the way how we can operate with them it's just gonna be the graphic kind of artwork and that's why uh the black and white uh painting calls grisile and that's actually tell us that that's not going to be the color uh, of work it's going to be the graphic work what we're going to do we're going to use today uh, our paper in the vertical way again um, and we're going to use palette since we still have colors in our drawing only and i'm going to show you for the inspiration as usual the picture of the palm trees that's a beautiful sunset somewhere in hawaii probably and I'm just showing this to you just to show you the structure. Uh, our palm trees uh, have totally different kind of structure. Instead of branches goes on the sides of the uh, trunk, they actually have leaves growing uh, on the top of the tr big trunk, which just goes farther, farther toward to the sky. And the leaves on the branches they kind of kind of bunch up a little bit and create this uh unforgettable beautiful design of this tree very recognizable you can recognize the palm tree from the distance uh very very fast because it's so uh, original and not looks like the other trees right uh i will start with uh the composition where my palm tree will be located on the picture my the paper so that you can see what i'm doing so uh i want to do the uh, kind of the moon a uh, light shine uh and uh, that's gonna be the ocean and uh the palm tree will be on the side of this picture so basically uh i will just first create uh, my horizon line of uh, for the our painting was almost half and half so i will use uh, the horizon line uh, layout just right in the middle of our work like that i will put the shoreline this time not like we did the first time on our first lesson i will put the shoreline kind of um, on the side just like that so that's going to help me to have enough room for our palm tree. And uh, I believe so I can put some leaves on this side. It's going to go farther to the ocean. And first we'll do just like this. I uh, am closer to our shoreline. And that one will be a little bit farther one will be like far far away there probably but rhythm again so that's why i want to uh put the bigger cliff uh closer to us and then another one will be farther and then the last one will be far far away and here we're going to have just the horizon line and then uh the moon 
I think that this will be the good spot on it. This spot uh, will be good for the moon because we gonna have a lot of uh, action going in this corner. So we have to uh, keep the balance and uh, have something uh, on this side too. So that's gonna help us to keep the balance of our composition. And uh, the last thing which is I wanna sketch here, that's gonna be our palm tree right over here on the side and I will put this a little bit in direction toward to the ocean because sometimes they kind of lean on the side they're not they're not always straight so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna kind of have this palm tree leaning a little bit longer usually the uh, trunk of the palm tree kind of slim not that wide as the other trees sometimes have like oak tree for instance has like the white uh, very very bulky looking trunk this one is going to be slim and slender and it's going to go up to the sky and one tree on that which is has some space uh and uh, it's still narrow but not um not like really really tiny and then it goes to, uh, on the top and that become like really really slim and from that slim part that's from uh, where branches uh, start their lines so and they goes almost like a firework so uh we can uh, locate them as a firework uh, kind of goes every direction and then we're going to use uh, our strokes like that showing that the palm tree has leaves and their leaves are kind of looks like um, a bunch of birds sitting on the wire so uh, they're just very crowded crowded the branch and and then you kind of uh, put them in a flexible way it um, goes kind of diagonal and they're more wider and longer uh, on a, a, a side which is close to the surface so that's how uh, their structure goes and then we will work with our brush and uh, detail them better so, and uh, don't forget that they should be look like a firework so it goes every direction so instead of uh, just have few branches uh, going over to the surface they kind of go all over okay so that works and one will be just behind but I can put uh, another one uh, right behind so just to create some pattern so it's not like only one palm tree but I have another one going a little bit farther over there and it's a little bit good for your practice so that you can still uh, make another palm tree but smaller that's gonna be our other firework be right behind because the way how uh, the trunk works it has some interesting like a almost like a ladder goes toward to the sky it's some units uh, on that palm tree um, they kind of like um, go grow from each other like a train if you look at the train the older coaches they kind of goes from um, like a caterpillar one from each other same thing the palm tree has that segments from which like each year the next part of the trunk grow and that's create this particular way how the trunk work just like a train goes toward to the sky so i think that is going to be enough we can maybe put some rocks here just you know just to improve our composition maybe some little baby palm tree can be and just like that we can finish what do you think or we can put also the 
stone yacht sailing and enjoying their own weight in here on the water. That's going to show us uh, that that's the water surface because the mirrored reflection shows that this uh, yacht is in the water. So and then it's also going to be some balance for the composition. That's going to show us uh, that that's the water surface because the mirrored reflection shows that this uh, yacht is in the water. So and then it's also going to be some balance for the composition. We'll start with the colors. I mean, we have only two, but we're still painting. And I will use, uh, this time I'm going to use a medium brush because it's it's a busy drawing. So we don't want to kind of spoil this with the too wide brush. And of course, like always, I will try to start uh, with the sky and then work on the water and then kind of create the background for our palm tree first. So, and then we have to decide what's going to be darker, uh, the sky or the water. Uh, the water will be still darker because sky is air and the water is more less translucent it's more um, it's contain more um substance in that and that's why the layers of the water they create the darker colors so i'm gonna use the darker shade of gray or black color what we have and i think that we can start from the side where's the heels um, over there we still can make like really uh dark uh, ocean because our ocean has to be lighter than the palm trees because the palm trees they're gonna be uh the darkest one and we leave it for now because we have to kind of decide it first on the sky color and for the sky color, I will use some white. And I will uh, use first this color on my top part of the sky. Kind of around, very careful. We're going to um, paint um, our sky around the palm tree. A little bit more white close to the moon because moon will be the white object on our picture so if you remember when we were painting the sun we had the uh, light around the sun so our uh, same thing gonna happens with the moon we're gonna have the lighter colors around the moon so because uh, we need to spread the light around right so that's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do around the moon we don't color the moon yet because we need the clean white and uh, we color with the light a color uh, and that's created from black and white so it's kind of light gray and the gray get more intense as far as goes around the moon so we can use the strokes are uh, kind of roundy so that's kind of will create the light around the moon because um the way how we put our strokes will create the sky light and the sky light up by the moonlight so when we uh, work on the moon later that's gonna be our night sun so that's what we're gonna do and this goes all the way around and uh, we're gonna try to be very careful around the palm tree because uh, we don't want to ruin our drawing first overdo the sky we don't want to make it too uh, dark uh, acrylic painting has tendency to uh, dry and become lighter so we want our sky to be too dark and we don't want our 
also a little dark for now because the darkest part will be the actually pumpkin. So what I'm gonna, I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna add some color for my uh, ocean right here. It's gonna be the reflection from the moon right here. And reflection from the moon uh, will uh, showing uh, on the uh, ocean all the way to the shoreline right here. I gotta have my dark black color for the ocean. Basically, it's uh, dark enough for uh, the ocean. I don't think that uh, we should worry about the very, very dark shade of it. So it's kind of not too dark because I don't know, just the way how that had been made on, on the factory, it's naturally kind of dark gray more than actually black and I kind of go around with my strokes uh, to create the ocean the horizontal strokes make almost like the kind of airy roundy uh, strokes here I go with the horizontal one and I don't actually cover the whole entire ocean right now with the uh, strokes because I'm gonna use my light 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 gray just to put the strokes between um the black ones uh, just to create the water and then uh, for the sand um i will wash my brush and i use um the light gray for the sand because sand is usually light so even uh, when it's the night time it's not going to be totally dark um black i will use some gray color and grisal uh, it's important to uh kind of um decide for yourself what uh intensity of the gray you're gonna have because uh, we can't just use the same um uh, black or white color everywhere we have the gray in the middle and the gray uh, that's the color which is gonna balance of your, your composition that the um, pieces uh, of um, your composition become a kind of right intensity understand more the approach for the gray style i recommend you to look at few uh, black and white pictures uh, maybe just google uh, some black and white uh, pictures on your um, computer and um, take a look um, just a little bit closer than maybe you ever look at them because uh, then you're gonna um, kind of know what to look for what I recommend you to um, look uh, at um, the pieces of your any photography uh, on um, what you will find how intense the um, tone of uh, shade of the black and white on that picture and try to find on them at the darker spots and the lighter spots and that's going to help you to um, train your brain with the right approach for your uh, black and white painting or even for uh, the graphic works with the pencils uh, the reason why we're doing the grisaille um, uh, lesson today, uh, we're kind of preparing ourselves for our next lesson, uh, which is going to be totally pencil drawing. Next time, we're going to continue our conversation about our uh, tone and intensity of the black and white. And we're going to go from the darker to the light one. So today it's just an um, introduction to that, a long conversation, because you kind of will already be well prepared to that. And um, I'm trying my best today to help you with that, with our uh, beautiful moonlight uh, picture. And then uh, when we're done, just like that, because I just 
use that gray shade uh, on the sand just to have a kind of balance between the uh, darker ocean um, uh, next by intensity will be the sky and the sand because it's naturally not that dark during the daytime that's going to be the gray color and then now we're going to kind of come to the lighter um, point on our picture the, the most light uh, point that's going to be the moonlight and i'm going to use for this i'm going to use my smaller brush um just like we did the sun uh, we use the um light light uh, yellow and white so today we have only white and then we're going to just make the moon circle here reserve the spot for the moon here and then i'm going to use that white and light gray i have on my palette just very light for uh, the reflection pretty wide uh, reflection here this light gray so i recommend you to do it so then we have the uh, moon and we have the moonlight on the ocean so we're gonna have our two lightest spots i also gonna put a little bit of light on our um, yacht sail because the sail usually white so then it's kind of deserved to have the light shade of gray gray on it so right here have the light gray here too and i think that we can have the light gray as the light by the shore too of the ocean because it's kind of collect uh, light uh, for some reason closer to the shore that's what we're going to do uh, it's going to be a sun moonlight too and um i think that uh, now we can uh, work also on our uh, mountains on um, the, the that hills uh, which is come closer to the ocean and uh, we have to break them on our in by intensity of our black too so i think that the first one will be the darkest one right here not that dark as the ocean so uh, that's how we kind of break up our tone our shade of black i don't want this one will kind of light up by the moon light so it's gonna be the light shade of it will be kind of in the middle between that one kind of will be the medium grade of this gray color we will over paint that later don't worry if you can see the difference now because that's just a gray color but we're gonna uh, make it work so we'll just need them to dry and see which one needs some more color and this rocks right here they definitely will be darker than the sand so and just like that i don't know why i forgot to finish here the ocean what i was thinking now uh we're gonna have the smaller brush and we will work on our palm tree well we're gonna use that gray so we're gonna start with the bottom of this trunk color toward the top of the palm tree it has some like a train wagons um structure i try to keep it so because that's kind of the character of the palm tree so um, that will help us to create the right shape of it and we can uh, use the a, a little bit smaller brush later to uh, fix the sides of this um, trunk so to make it more accurate another black right here which is a little bit more like a darker gray but I will use that for 
my other trunk right here because this one gonna be uh, a little bit lighter just like maybe one tone lighter going on that side that was a smaller ponton right here and that's uh will be uh, the trunk part for our palm tree use the uh, tiny brush like that and that's gonna help us to work on branches and if you remember the branches of the palm tree they all uh, looks like a firework it goes all around the tree and they made from the um, branch and leaves are actually grow on this branch it almost looks like a feather if you look at the feather of the any bird feather not probably any bird but some of the birds gonna have fluffier uh, feathers but some of the birds has this particular structure so and uh, what we're gonna do we're gonna use our black uh, color for um, decreating that um, branches uh, if I to make mistake uh, you can use actually for the branches uh, pastel so uh, you can use the word uh, pastel chart uh, if you think that figure will be too hard to uh, actually draw with the brush because drawing with the brush involves some a little bit more practice I think uh, and then uh, I will let you have pastel for that but for now I'm just gonna create that shape of the palm tree and and put some leaves on the palm tree uh, kind of uh, looks uh, when you uh, look at the uh, palm tree branch it looks like the extended bird feather right so don't forget that shape just keep it in your mind when you're trying to recreate that uh, leaves for the palm tree so that it looks like a feather what happens in real life they kind of overcast a little bit each other because they go in a group that can happen and if you get bored with them you can work on something else and give yourself a break on that kind of tedious uh, a little bit job to create that leaves of the palm tree stop on working on them and uh, work a little bit on sky or ocean else and then uh, see wh what the color uh, uh, intensity will be when it's dry and then work on the other uh, palm tree don't take too much color on your brush because then it's uh, gonna be too much and you can make mistake because it's important to have them tiny uh, otherwise they're gonna look like a banana tree and banana palm tree has the wider branches and leaves another branch and right here will be one too it might be not come to the same spot when i draw it it's okay because it's pretty much uh, the same um like uh, and here, like I told you, we can work a little bit on the branch, um, the trunk, the biggest branch, right? The trunk, uh, the trunk. Don't uh, put um, them in the same size, this uh, part of this tree, because they uh, kind of uh, become smaller and smaller, closer to the top of the tree. Smaller. then it's gonna be the right proportion and after that I think that I can um, change the brush and work a little bit on something else create the layers on the ocean right here and um, give some support to the sand over here um, space between uh, rocks and the water and this is it this is um and also we can put a little bit more strokes on the ocean black on that 
we use uh, strokes because then uh, it's not gonna look like water. We still need that strokes or look like a waves on a ocean. So that's gonna help us uh, to recreate the water surface. Uh, and we just bring it to the shore. And uh, here by the our sail, we can work on the ocean too. Uh, light of the moon right here to a uh, boat uh, because a boat will be lighter so i'm gonna use that darker shade of this black color uh just to highlight the ocean around the boat so that's the boat kind of will be uh kind of shade lighter but to finish the ocean part right here and what i want to do i want to go back to sky a little bit and uh, use a uh, little bit more uh, kind of gray color um, to we need more uh, intensity to it. Uh, so I think that we still need, but not too much because now we know that the darkest uh, will be the palm tree. So then we don't want to overcast uh, the palm tree with the very dark sky. Sky is just support, but we can leave that white in between because then it's gonna looks unfinished and not uh, exactly right uh, according by our composition it's a right uh, color right shade for uh, color be um, behind the palm tree we can actually let ourselves have a little bit darker shade for the sky this corner is gonna be uh, more darker because it's farther from the moonlight so it's uh, a lot of um, work um, to ask yourself questions and answer them what's darker what's lighter you always do when you're painting because it's all compatible and comparable but here it's a more harder work because you don't have colors you just have the shades and that make it harder but as I said very rewarding it's actually improve your approach to the painting too because after when you uh, paint with grisal uh, you will see how your skills are improved even for the regular painting because you will kind of uh, see the uh, shade of uh, the colors better so when you finish uh, the sky, you will see how your picture be will become more right by the color. So that's uh, going to give you the right shades for particular areas. Sky is always one of the biggest comparable object on a picture because it helps you to find the right shades. So especially here when we have only two it's uh, one of the main character uh, and a helper for the whole composition finish this part so that we know what exactly shade of the color we will choose for our hue right there uh, make sure that i get uh, the right shade uh, we gonna finish since we have already white color on our brush we'll finish with the moonlight here And that's, as I said, to help us to create the break between those little rocks and the moonlight by the shore. Light, uh, some light outlining on the shoreline with the moonlight. And then I will use my white for sail a little bit right here and um, then I will go back to the darker shades so um, I'll show you exactly what um, the shade I'm gonna have this is gonna be just like that and this is gonna be for my heel over there what shade of uh, color is the sand because sand is always light during the day it's almost like 
this beige color so uh, and the uh, mountains and hills by the ocean they always darker see that's kind of start making sense right so before it was too light but because uh it's acrylic colors and it's always hard to when you start it's hard to hard to say what exactly shade we're gonna have and now that's all puzzle kind of comes together because we getting there we using the right shades and this is going to be the next right here uh, and it's going to be lighter careful because it's going to be hard to make it lighter uh, especially because the light from the moon comes on that so we'll see i i can't tell exactly what i'm gonna do but we'll just wait until it's dry i'll work a little bit here on the shade of darker black color and um i will use uh, some darker color for this rock structure a little bit light over here color because uh that's kind of the lighter part of it uh tore over to the moonlight uh, we don't want that too dark because it has some light from the moon one right here so even the small one here i will also add some light a shade for on the sand over here because that's kind of empty now and this white it's it doesn't work properly for us we need to improve that color and more um, very light gray color here gonna do when you are uh, actually painted so you keep asking yourself what's lighter what's darker a look at the picture or make maybe make a sketch for yourself a little one from on the shades of the color you're gonna use that will help just even write down of maybe just um make a sketch and say okay this is will be dark gray this is gonna be the black to completely like ocean color this is gonna be lighter because it's a sand uh, and then just kind of use that note for yourself when you paint and that might help too no uh, and I also need the boat because uh, since I already will have the smaller brush, I can fix my boat with the darker color for that. And then we will see when it's dry what we should add to that. And then I will use the smaller, smaller brush for my um other palm trees i have have to worry about this uh, shade because that should be the just the dark dark whatever dark we have it's kind of dark gray here because that's what they put in the can here so uh because this tree is farther so uh, we will be not that particular on detail uh, we're just gonna try to do our best of course but if uh if you have for instance not that um, clean lining here on the street that's okay because it's farther away that's not um the priority this one has to be better that's why we will come back to um details uh, of the front palm tree Afraid of uh, kind of spoiled your work with this palm trees branches you can use the pastel and just do it with the pastel or Crayola charts and uh, put these branches in drawing also as the um, Crayola pencil or anything uh, which is will be more easy for you even on the um, black 
depends on who work. And if you feel tired, just come back to something else in your picture that you had before. So then you come back back to details on the I just has to meet in the same spot. That's important <laughs> because that's how the firework works. It comes from the same place. I light on the trunk here only on one side because another one will be light up a little bit by the moonlight. One now with whatever leaves we did. And then we're gonna work on our little tiny one right next to over here. Bigger tree. Kind of lean taller to the ocean. And for this one, there's gonna be like little tiny branches here. Uh, we're gonna um, put some leaves on that, of course, too. And they will be um, same direction as the other ones that go around ar around the branch of the tree, the trunk. And this is our palm tree here. The little one. Uh, the drawing kind of get lost. So we are recreating that with the our brush so we're kind of working on this over the colors but because it's a darker stone uh, a shade of this uh, black color so it's okay because if we're gonna work for instance on a medium shade so that will be hard but because it's a darkest shade a uh, shade of this um, black so it's okay because um, we're kind of going over the lighter colors. And let's just try and see then after if we need to make it a little bit darker or not. So I'm going to add some dark um, shade to this uh, front one. And I uh, will start from this darker part right here because uh, usually palm trees has like a lot of uh, branches going from the top of the trunk so that's kind of darker area the dark shade here and this part was not dark enough to get some intense color to and I will use because that's nothing left there, I will use this dark gray there. And on um, this color, uh, the darkest on the whole entire picture. Because uh, this is our, next to the ocean, the darkest part of the picture. Uh, why I highlight this? Because I think that when it's uh, dry, this become a little bit lighter. So I want that to be really dark for the right contrast of um, the all shades we have here. Because the palm tree is really dark in the night. The green color, which is even during the daytime, looks pretty intense and dark. And uh, on the nighttime, it's going to be the one of the darkest shades. And uh, when you do it, you will see that it's actually all start working together because uh, it's going to, like I said, create the right expression and uh, right, right shade for your landscape. I'll ask yourself a question, what's the darkest, what's the lightest part? And then uh, when you uh, find the answer, so that's going to help you to uh, have the right tone of your picture. So, and especially when it's grisal, it's only two colors. So um, that's important to find the right com comparison to 
this course and um, have the right neighbor and I will work a little bit on the trunk as I said oh, we're gonna just highlight one side and leave another one kind of wider because that's kind of the moonlight will highlight that part this one with some some highlight too use your darker gray on my sand because that can be the shadows from the palm trees right here so this is gonna help us to kind of create the right of light because the light uh, sh light shade uh, will be on this side because the moon is over here on that side so that the shade goes against the light so that's gonna be in this direction same thing will be on the sand that's gonna be the shade from this rocks uh, goes the same direction why and I think that now we can finish just a few um, places which is uh, have the spot because um, that's uh, almost will be not right if we don't get the right shade on the white spots. Um, we need some maybe lighter gray for the moonlight on the side of the ocean close to the shoreline and i will use the really light gray for that almost the white because that's kind of where the um moonlight kind of get to the water use that light gray for that and um on the horizon line I will use some light shade of gray too as the sunshine or leave the mirror reflection in the moon does the same thing to the ocean so then we can use this on our picture too and that's gonna look uh, appropriate because moon on the night time has become like a sun on the night and it's actually color the object with the shadows and highlights uh, so it helps us when we do the light on the ocean it help us to kind of highlight the moon too I'm not going to be widening and it's going to be a little bit translucent uh, and has some light to it. It's not going to be wide, but it's going to be light and it's going to create that shine. We'll have uh, over the gray the light spread on the sky. Um, because uh, it's nothing else on the sky that uh, bright so there's the sky get highlighted pretty good uh, on the night time depends on the moon of course this might be the harvest moon which is really light because a shade of the gray around just to get more attention to the sky the gray color is also for the uh, light on the sail reflection too gonna leave some reflection on the ocean too very light gray on the side right here the moon too because the light of the moon gonna be by the shore too it's a uh, highlight the side of the ocean too when it's connected to our 
same part and um, now I think that I can uh, give you the gray for uh, our side kind of I uh, kind of do it very light because I don't want to overcast our moon line red shade so uh, it's not gonna be like empty a spot here because it's sky still has a color not the white color here kind of rounded uh, strokes for that because it helps us um, to uh, create that beautiful lighting uh, and highlights on the moon once right finishing um, for the shades of the color we need to use help us to get it all kind of um, together in a composition and uh, create the right um, accents of for our picture. Especially on this side because this side is farther from the moon. So the sky will be pretty dark there. So I can use um, the darker shade here. And here, uh, like it always get darker above your head so that's kind of the spot here that can be dark and i think that i should have a little bit darker shade for that rocky mountain come closer to the ocean and um let's kind of finish up our Mountain that way, right here. Structure. It's pretty dark during even the day, it has the darker color. And that rocks, which is on the front over here, those ones, they pretty dark to me. Uh, and they just kind of hang here. Because if it's going to be too light here, that part will be too dark. And I think that I can get a few um, final strokes to our ocean with the darker shades a little bit on uh, here by the uh, sailboat here. And um, kind of by the moon line. to uh, get the right shade of red because as we said then before um, the ocean will be one of the darkest parts of our picture this is the um, important part uh, for us to uh, kind of create the uh, bottom movement uh, that's why I use that um, strokes are uh, the horizontal strokes goes like on the short uh, horizontal direction because uh, this is help us to create the surface of the water comparison to uh, the sky which is has more light uh, color and more a substance and um this is why I use the different type of the strokes for uh, each part of the picture because uh, that helps me to recreate um, kind of nature a look on it. Have to really pay attention. Uh, like I said, ask ourselves questions: what is darker, what is lighter, uh, we, where uh, I have to put more um, darker shades or lighter shades because that's how we only with two colors we recreate the um our our composition and uh, give our object particular colors uh, the shade of colors only because we don't have their real color it is our painting it's almost like the black and white photography where we don't have color and I think that we 
I'm um, done with the ocean for for now. Let it dry, and uh, we will see if we need to add more intense colors to it, or it's good enough. Let let it dry. Um, I just kind of look now and analyzing what else I need to highlight or make darker. So far, kind of thinking that um, we just need a little bit of um, gray shade here by the palm trees to still uh, highlight the borders between the water and the shoreline. I'm gonna I'll make it darker. Uh, and I think that maybe for the hue of this mountain, I can maybe add a little bit more intense color here. It will be lighter because it's uh, kind of exposed to the moonlight. And the other part is kind of darker, so I guess that will be good on that. And um, I think um, need to get a smaller brush and um, highlight the uh, actually the clothes body with you. And I think that uh, we can uh, definitely get some uh, moonlight on the board body. So then it's gonna help us to actually the create the shape uh, because that's. Um, kind of sink in the ocean you can see the boat anymore the moonlight on it so that help us to highlight it but that's reflection don't really overdo it otherwise it will become more intense and it will be over uh, because there are actually the same tone uh, in um, the real reality not on the reflection and I think that we can highlight a little bit of moonlight right there because uh, we kind of over um, do on the back on that spot so that will help us to get the moonlight to retrieve it back kind of a little bit on the side on the shoreline and also on the sailboard ocean but not too white just a um, kind of grayish highlight on the palm trees just to show on uh, the light uh, which is moonlight uh, rays on palm trees the darker color or from the color hill over there, the mountain, rocky mountain. And same thing here, a little bit of highlights doesn't hurt. Same thing we can use the highlight on the rock right here. It's still the ocean here, so I'm kind of sink a little bit. And um, then I guess it's good, so I'm just gonna get a little bit of a gray color here by the palm trees. Um, and um, I, I will highlight the horizon here a little bit more. So, um, differentiate the hills over there and the ocean borders. Um, maybe a little bit of black highlights on the palm trees and um, darker again so it's kind of still too light color it's all dry and become lighter now highlight right now uh, to highlight that um, darker part in the shadows and that kind of helps uh, to for the last um, finishing um, of our 
sponging um, because that's gonna bring them closer to us uh, as the objects because they should be darker uh, as the structure because they are darker then yeah, because when the bar brush become uh, less uh, moisture they will start um, making the wrong shape for you uh, because if it's a tiny brush uh, it has to be moist uh, very well so then it kind of uh, get the right shape for your uh, places where you want to paint with that it's so you blend it with the sky and other palm trees <laughs> that's the most darker part Thinking for this one, kind of get lost a little bit. As I said, uh, you don't want to ruin your picture, so when you highlight the darkest parts, uh, be careful, don't overdo it because um, then it will be very sad that you almost finished and then you make the wrong move and your tree doesn't look the same anymore as i said if you're afraid to do it just uh, use the pencil and then it's gonna help you do that either so i'm trying to be very 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 careful for my last highlight everywhere that's okay because uh, it's gonna make it looks more natural I just need a little bit of highlights for the palm tree behind because that's kind of uh, get lost a little bit too. Get us closer to the finishing of our work. Today uh, we were working on our moonlight uh, landscape and that's all made uh, in grisaille. Uh, grisaille it's where you use only black and white uh, composition uh, with a uh, particular lighting on it and I choose the palm trees today by the ocean and uh, the part of my composition was the moon and the moonlight and we were trying to uh, create the right comparison uh, by the shades of the black and white and gray colors here by the kind of analyzing what's going to be darker and what's going to be lighter our ocean was uh, in the palm trees was the darkest part and then on uh, the sky and the mountains on the side and um the lightest parts was the moon uh, moonlight reflection in the sailboat over there and the sand in the middle so the sand was kind of in the middle of the uh, all shades of colors we have and the lights around the moon i think that we are we accomplished that and that was the one of the graphic lesson we have next time we're gonna uh, draw with the pencil okay. thank you so much and thank you for watching my lesson and see you next time